The UK's membership of the European Union is a subject that is now very much in the news. The campaign for an independent Britain, the CIB, are committed to leaving the European Union. We have come to Devon to learn about FUD, UNIS, Codex and Flexit. Dr Richard North will explain all in his talk. Could the solution be magic? I think the dog's seen the rabbit. <laughs> you stay there, there we are. And he says that with all this renegotiating, that we'll be all right and totally contained. But you and I know it's the British people have got a chance, and they've got a chance to raise the flag for Britain again. And I'm sure today you will be here, and we hope oh. Oh. that the EU will have gone. Thank you very much. I'm Peter Troy, I've organised this event, but I'm not the CIB. Edward Spalton very much is, and I'll let you, Edward, explain the wonders of the CIB to this wonderful group Thank of people. Thank you very much, Peter. If only it was as easy as that. Uh, a very warm welcome to everybody on behalf of the Campaign for an Independent Britain. Uh, we are a cross-party group of individuals and organisations, which has actually been going since the late 60s, when our far-sighted founders perceived that the then European economic community was something different from the common market, which its proponents said it was. Now, apart from our desire to return to national democratic self-government, we do not have a single detailed party line and our affiliated organisations range from the Labour Euro Safeguards campaign on the left to the Freedom Association on the right, and our individual members have a similar range of views and come from all parties and none. We are wholly dependent on member subscriptions and on donations for our funding. I ran my own business, and in the Sunday Telegraph of the 28th of July last year, a Mr John Lidston wrote... From 1961 to 1972, as part of a team of key businessmen, I spoke to meetings throughout Britain, arguing the case for the United Kingdom to join, for trade purposes, what was then known as the European Common Market. The case for enjoying the benefits of favourable access to a marketplace of millions was overwhelming. Had Ted Heath, the chief negotiator, S told the British people what the long-term consequences of joining the EU would be, I and my team would never have supported such a policy. Mr Lidston and many like him were deceived, and you often hear people say, we joined a common market, not a super state, or words to that effect. The EU project is now so blatant and so obviously anti-democratic that it can no longer be concealed and UKIP's remarkable recent achievements show that people in the wider public are waking up to it. So we feel it's now our task not just to reveal the moral, democratic, political and indeed financial bankruptcy of the EU project, but to raise our eyes to what life can be outside it and to plan for it. Thank you. Edward, thank you very much. Um, right, as we said at the beginning, this is a workshop. We're going to get ask people to talk and contribute. What we'd like you to do is just break into three groups, okay? And just talk amongst yourselves in your groups. Um, and what we want to get from the groups is what is your understanding of what is the EU? What is the public's understanding of the EU? And this workshop is about how we leave the EU. And it's the public's understanding of that that we are interested in before we sort of move further into the subject. Now, we're going to do this in three groups. The room is fairly... How should we leave the EU, assuming we, we should, and how will the public react to that? 
we're up against a very big, what I call, motherhood and apple pie group, who think it's nice to cooperate. In fact, they're not informed about what, how the EU is affecting them, are they? You know, they've got... We have lost all democracy, all sovereignty, and we have a Franz Ferdinand as a totalitarian, except he's got 28 hats on and members of the Commission. <laughs> Normal reason people raise immediately is the economic one, you know, yeah. damage to trade or job and therefore jobs. Three main parties pretend the EU is not very important. I don't go with your point. No, I don't. I think about 20% maximum know, really know what it's about. The other 80% are drifting in the breeze. But I don't think they're going to turn out in a referendum anyway. A lot of the people who are on the 50 pros saying, look, I don't really like my life being taken over by Brussels. Think to yourself, what are we actually getting? Is our trade that good there? I'm not convinced that it is. And if it went, couldn't we get it somewhere else? So I don't think the general public have been given an objective uh, view, of, view of Europe. I think there's a bit of a sort of inferiority complex when we think of, you know, our European neighbours. Is there enough information out there in the public domain? Is the press actually exercising its skills effectively and talking about the issue in detail, informing people, or is it very superficially dealt with? And if it is, what can be done about it? The, you'll only, the general public will only really wake up to something if it affects them personally or if it affects someone close to them. Neil, would your group uh, yes, come well, up with some dynamic points? That well, we just on the specific question of what is the EU, three points. One is it's, uh, the EU is a, the European Union of the regions. Um, it is a macroeconomic undemocratic bureaucracy. That's a macro. Last, <laughs> a macroeconomic <laughs> undemocratic bureaucracy. And last but not least, the European Union is a political union, is the point, is the key thing to point out. It is not Europe, it is a political union. Any other points, Edward? In our group, too, we did uh, mention that there was a, a great deal of apathy uh, amongst people about it, and it's very difficult to break through that. Uh, people are uninterested, and I think it was mentioned earlier that the EU moves by such slow stages that there's very rarely any great dramatic movement that you can stir up uh, resistance against. The meeting continued with our key speaker, Dr Richard North, introducing his paper, Flexit, how we leave the European Union. Ends up, as I say, with Flexit, flexible response. In other words, we're not going to be dogmatic. It is, doesn't have to be a uh, Norway option. If they won't have us in, there are alternatives. Preferably it's Norway, but maybe not. But either way, whatever goes is flexible. But the real issue is continuous. The Leaving the EU isn't the end of the process, it's the start of the process.